Kitty. No. Ronnie. All right. Um, um, okay. Now we're in the differential timing. And uh, the rest of the... So basically, the way the differential timing is going to work is we're going to do... Um, a couple uh we're gonna do the bacon decomposition we're gonna do three papers weighted group time golly i gotta get my act together imputation diff and diff and uh we're not gonna be able to cover fuzzy i don't even see us seeing us being able to cover matrix completion but we'll, we'll see i i apologize this is just i am slow as molasses as my mom would say so um we're gonna do the bacon decomposition first so we covered the simple two by two. We did this. I did this. All right. So for this part, um, what we're going to do for this part is similar to what we did with Santana and Zhao. I think I misspelled Zhao. Um, we will decompose two way fixed effects to understand what it needs for unbiasedness under differential timing. All of this is from Goodman Bacon 2021, Journal of Econometrics. But the expression of the weights is from 2018. And uh, I have a really good reason. Uh, and that's that I didn't want to read it. Uh, I didn't want to relearn the new weights. So, um, but I, I think I can explain it. The weights are the same. They're just kind of manipulated a little bit. And what we're going to see for the first time is that, you know, so it's kind of similar. It's got a similar flavor as, as Santana and Zhao. Because with Santana and Zhao, we were like, well... Parallel trends is not enough uh, if you have covariates, right? You need these other assumptions. Same thing with Goodman Bacon. It's going to say parallel trends is not enough if a particular thing is the case, you need more, okay? Now, Goodman Bacon is not a model. It is not an estimator. Sometimes people think that. They haven't read the paper yet. They're hearing about it all the time, and they think to themselves, well... Uh, I'm hearing about Goodman Bacon all the time, and uh, I got to do the Goodman Bacon model. I'll, I'll show you that 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 is not a true. Um, but uh, what is true is it is a very useful uh, decomposition of the two-way fixed effects estimator under differential timing that basically helps illustrate for us the problems that we have. Uh, when using that the two-way fixed effects model and it's going to kind of guide us it's going to convince you Hopefully, I think I will be able to convince you that you should be uh, Afraid very afraid of using two-way fixed effects I am going to kind of scare you with a simulation that guarantees that you get the wrong sign uh, but that's part of my pedagogy is um, Aristotle said sometimes you have to go too far uh, to get people to kind of understand a more typical case and that's I'm gonna go too far but um, But I'll show you an example that in, in one of my papers actually there is a sign flip So that's what we're kind of gonna see is that part of the problem with two-way fixed effects You don't have any guarantees that the sign is right. There is no there is no no sign flip property with two-way fixed effects and that's quite nerve-wracking right so two-way fixed effects estimates a parameter that is a weighted average over all the two by twos in your sample. Two-way fixed effects is going to assign weights. Those weights are going to be a function of sample sizes of each group and the variance of the treatment dummies for those groups. It needs two assumptions. Variance weighted parallel trends are zero. So, so think about, think about uh, we have now a like new version of a parallel trends assumption. Before, we had this... Uh, parallel trends. Then we add conditional parallel trends with covariates. There's not going to be any covariates in the thing I'm going to discuss today, but I'm just going to say with the, with the, uh, without, mm, without, um, covariates, you're going to need, uh, variance weighted parallel trends to be zero. So that's a new one. We're going to see what that is. And you're going to need no dynamic treatment effects. That, that actually was not the case with the two by two. Two by two did not put any limits on any of the dynamics, okay? Under those assumptions, two-way fixed effects estimators are gonna eliminate the variance weighted AT, estimate the variance weighted ATT, and it's gonna be a weighted average over all 
possible ATTs. And see, what you're going to see is that since there is this differential timing, see how I said all possible ATTs? That's because there's this differential timing and states are getting treated at different points in time. So each state has an ATT. And so what you're going to get from two-way fixed effects under those assumptions is a weighted average of every state's ATT, which is kind of nice. That's a nice property, so long as you're willing to make those assumptions. So here is uh, some terms in notation. Oh, shoot. Am I not recording? I am recording. I am recording. I'm going to just keep recording. Uh, I'm not going to turn it off. Thank you, though, Sequa Zada. Um, so two-way fixed facts needs to... I did that. All right, so let's look at some terms in notation. We're going to have two treatment groups. Group K and group L. K is going to be the early group, group that gets treated first, like Florida was treated in 05. And then L is going to be the later treated group. L would be Montana. Montana was treated in 2009. Then you're going to have this third group called the U group. That's the untreated group. All right, so we got three groups. Okay. We're going to define uh, how much time a group spends treated with this term right here. So let's think about Florida. Florida was treated in 05. Let's say our panel, let's say we only had 10 years and it was treated in the middle of the year. So that would mean it's D bar for Florida is 50% versus Montana. Montana is treated one year out of the 10. So it's D bar is 10%. So the more time you're treated, the larger your D bar is, less time you're treated, smaller. Okay. Then we've got these two by twos, right? And the two by two is just going to be, uh, it's just going to be the different, it's going to be the before and after minus the before and after particular groups. Now, how many two by twos are there when we have uh, any differential timing scenario? I find it helpful uh, to start with a slightly larger slightly larger situation than we had with the K and L situation. We're going to have three timing groups. A timing group is when a group gets treated. Timing group is a group getting treated at different points in time, A, B, and C. Okay. And we're going to have one untreated group. So there are going to be nine two by two diff and diffs. All right. Here they are. You could compare A to B, you could compare A to C, and you could compare A to U, right? So these are all individual two by twos. We're just looking at A before and after, B before and after, A before and after, C before and after, got it? Then you could do B to A, B to C, B to U. Now, some of you on the call said, Scott, you just did A to B. How is that different, okay? This is not the same thing as this. The reason is this is A's before and after. So that would be B for A's before and after. Okay. And this is B's before and after. So this might be Florida 2005, Montana before 05, after 05. But this might be Montana 09, after minus before, Florida after minus before in 2009. So you see how. You see how you can get um, two comparison groups. Some of the times, one is the treatment group and the other time it's the control group. In the same comparison, we have nine, right? So we went through all of them. We do not have 12, okay? We do not have 12 because you can't have a U to A, U to B, U to C because U by definition is a never treated group, okay? So we're gonna return to our simpler example with the K group treated at T star K and L treated at T star L, T star K, 2005, T star L, 2009. And then we're going to have this untreated group. All right, so this is from uh, Andrew's paper. Pre-2005, two star, uh, pre -2005, that's called pre-Florida K, but it's pre-period for Florida. T star L, that's Montana, 09, so that's after 2009. And this is the period between 05 and 09. Now, this is the untreated group. So there's like 20, no, there's like 30 states in Ching and Hookstra that are never treated. So that would be just their time path. 
and they're just following on some trend. This is Florida. Florida traveling here gets treated, goes up. L Montana goes treated, goes up. And we have four two by twos because remember what we have is we have K squared two by two. So however many timing groups there are, you have that many two by twos. So if you have, so if you have a project with only three treatment dates, you will have nine underlying two by twos. If you have five, you have 25, right? So we have two, so we have four, all right? So we do the same thing here, group L, group L. Okay, we're gonna take, I don't, I don't have the ability on this to, I don't know how to actually draw on here, but if I did, could draw, I would be taking the mean here and the mean here, and I'll take the mean there, and I'll take the mean there. So that's what I'd be taking those two by twos. Now these aren't causal, all right? Two by twos are not causal unless you can invoke assumptions. All right, so just keeping that in mind. Do the same thing there before and after. Now we've got this K to L scenario. All right, now what's going on here? This is a treatment group being compared to a quote, not yet treated group. Okay, that's the language that you get from Callaway and Santana and Son and Abraham and probably a few others. They're always talking about different kinds of control groups and there's the never treated, that was the U group, and then there's the not yet treated and here's one. Here's a two by two for the not yet treated. Group K in the mid period, so that'd be you know Florida from 05 to 09, Florida from 2005 to 04, Montana, 05 to 09, Montana, 2000 to 2004. Now this one is different. And Borsak, uh, Jerville, and Spice. I got, I know, I know, I already know I got all the names wrong. I just, I don't know the right way to say it. Um, they call this the forbidden two by two. And the reason it is the forbidden two by two, you think about most anomalous economic metrics, talking about the forbidden regressions in those IV models. This is the forbidden two by two. And the reason it is forbidden is because this is group L, this is Montana, post minus pre, and what is this? Florida, post minus pre. Now why is it forbidden? Because Florida, the control group, has already been treated. You cannot use as your control group an already treated unit except under very strong assumptions, which we'll get into. So here's the problem. Two-way fixed effects implicitly calculates that two by two, that two by two, that two by two, and that two by two, and applies weights. It's a weighted average over all four two by twos, okay? So two of the two by twos are in here. This is our never treated two by twos. It's both the KU and the LU. I just kind of condensed them. And it's got this weight right here. And I'll talk about what the weight is right here, but it's a positive weight, okay? Then we've got the two by two of the treatment group compared to the not yet treated. That is illegal, that is not forbidden. And then we've got the forbidden two by two. And the problem is when you run two-way fixed effects, you're telling two-way fixed effects to calculate that two by two, right? You're, that's, that's, what it, that's, that's its job. That's, that's two-way fixed effects job. Two-way fixed effects job is to take a weighted average over all, all K squared two by twos, some of which are going to be using already treated units as controls. Now here's the weights. The weights are SKU, okay? Share of the panel units in the treatment group, share of the units in the control group. And then you've got this right here. Now this right here is uh, what's called the variance of treatment. So let's say we're talking about Florida. 50% percent 0.5 times one minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.5 squared. So you've got this part of the weight, which is just a 0.25, right? On that particular two by two. But what about Montana? 0 0.9 minus 0 0.1. Oh, sorry, it'd be 0 0.1 times 0 0.9. That's whatever that is. That's gonna be 0 0.09, right? So depending on when you are treated, 
the variance of treatment will have different values and those values feed directly into the weight itself. And then it's scaled by this, uh, this um, variance term, by this positive scalar, and it doesn't really matter. So then you're gonna have here for the, for the not yet treated and for the already treated, <sighs> you're gonna have, sorry. <clears throat> Don't be asleep, cop. That's from Ted Lasso. So um, you're gonna have here this difference in the uh, percentage, the the treat the the share of time treated, right? You're gonna have this difference, right? And it looks like this is somehow like a little more exotic. This looks like it's a, a little more exotic, but uh, it is not. It is not. So um, what it is? Hold on one second. I have batteries. So it looks like it's a little more exotic, but if you look really closely, you'll see that um, it's still the same form. It's basically like some number times one minus that number. That's all that it is. Okay. So um, give me a. Uh, I'll fix it when, it when it breaks. And then you've got these weird weights right here, which are just the share of time untreated for the treatment group and the share of on time. The, the, this is why, th this was the reason that Andrew changed his weights around because this one's kind of hard to interpret. These kind of have variants of treatment interpretations in it, and this is just kind of weird. So we're just going to kind of ignore it. All right, so a couple of things. Uh, more units in a group, the bigger it's two by two weight. Right, so we only had one state in 2005 treated, that was Florida. So that weight is gonna be a little bit smaller. What, Siggy Pop said Ted who? That's uh, Ted, okay, that was, you were kidding. All right, so um, Ted Lasso. So um, more units in a group, the bigger it's two by two weight is. All right, so I think that's probably pretty intuitive. I was thinking about this one day, I was like, if a guy had a gun to my head, Right, and he was like, I want you to tell me right now, do you think that the weight on a particular two by two will be larger if that two by two has more units? And I had to guess, I would say yes, okay? All's forgiven, Siggy Pop. Um, but if it said to me, Scott, now you have to tell me if you think group treatment variance is going to weight up or down a group's two by two, I would say, you know, uh, I would just flip a coin because I wouldn't even understand the question. Okay. So let's think about what causes treatment variance to be as big as possible, because actually uh, it can be as big. It, 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 it is uh, going to reach a max. Okay. It's going to reach a max. So let's say Montana D bar 0.1. 0.1 times 0.9, the reason I'm doing that multiplication is for this right here, okay, 0 0.1, 0 0.9. That's 0 0.09. So that would mean this part of the weight, 0 0.09. What about 0.4? Okay, so it spends 40% of the time treated. 0.4 times 0 0.6, 0 0.24. All right, what about 0 0.5? 0 0.5 times 0.5, 0.25. Now look, look what's going on here. Uh, it's getting bigger, right? It's getting a little bit bigger. Now let's say we go from 0.4 to 0.5 to 0.6. So you got 40% of the time treated, 50% of the time treated, 60% of the time treated, right? Because it, it seems like you might think that it's linear, but look, it's not. 0.6 times 0.4, 0.6 times 0.4 is 0.24. So look what's going on we've got a parabola, right? The variance of treatment is ultimately a parabola in that D bar term, in that D bar term. But what about the treated on treated weights? Same principle as before, only now the centrality, the centrality that we're talking about is coming from uh, the distance between the two uh, shares, the distance between the two shares. So if one is treated 
you know, uh, at the 0.15 level, and this other one's treated at the 0.67 level, we'd have 0.85 minus 0 0.33, 0 0.85, something like that. You'd get 0 0.52, 0 0.52 times 0 0.48, same thing. So what that means is the two by twos with that are at the center of the panel are being weighted up, okay? The two by twos at the center of the panel are receiving the largest ceteris paribus weights. I mean, they're not the largest weights because the weights still have that stuff in there, but th that component is as large as possible for the center. Now, why do we care about that? We don't care about that. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. We don't care about that. There's no theoretical reason to like that, that I know of. Uh, there's no optimal panel, you know, thing. Like you draw it a different way. Somebody went from 2000 to 2010. Another person went from 2001 to 2010. One person went from 2000 to 2008. It's not really clear why one of them is right and one of them is wrong, to my knowledge, to my knowledge, okay? So different choices about panel length are gonna have two effects on that two-way fixed effects estimate. One is it's gonna change the two by two. Another is it's gonna change the variance of treatment, okay? Now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna substitute, because look, so we can, we can move here between sample averages and potential outcomes, okay? Sample averages and potential outcomes. So I do that, and when I plug everything in, and you know, and I do those adding of zeros and so forth, I get that standard representation of causal effect, non-parallel trends bias, right, for the K to U. So this is the two by two of the treatment group compared to an untreated group. And then I get the uh, two by two for the treatment group compared to the not yet treated. So I got an ATT for the post, I got an ATT for the mid, and I got a parallel trends bias term there. And then I get this. One. Now, I, I don't go through this in my lectures just because it takes a little bit of time, but it's in the appendix of um, Andrew Goodman Bacon's paper. So I encourage you, I mean, you know, honestly, I encourage, of all the papers, you know, I mean, all these papers are worth an investment, but this one is in particular worth the investment because this is the one that you need to pry your fingers loose of two-way fixed effects. This is the one you need, right? Because because now you really got to believe that you're in trouble. And uh, learning a new estimator isn't always enough. You kind of got to see that the other one is broken, okay? So when you do the treated compared to the already treated, you get three terms. You get a causal term, you get a parallel trends bias, and then you get negative heterogeneity bias. All right, so you got a positive weight, you got a negative weight. You combine all three, all right, so you got KU here, put that there. You got KL right there, put, put that there. And you got LK right here, that should be LK. Put that there and we combine the terms and we get this, okay? We get this. That two-way fixed effects estimates a parameter that is the sum of three terms. It is a variance weighted average treated on the treated and you'll see in a minute, it's a variance weighted because those are the weights. The weights have those variance treatment in it. Variance weighted ATT. And you know what's kind of interesting if Jeff Woldridge is still on the line? Jeff said uh, one time that the the top the the ten things that you know you sort of need to do econometrics is uh, you know these ten things, and one of them was the Frischwa theorem, and that that is where that's where that's where Andrew sort of you know worked out this paper. He just applied the Frischwa theorem over and over and over, and it revealed all this. You know, and Pedro does that kind of thing, and. You know, so so getting those paying attention to that stuff in your econometrics classes is is a good use of your time because there's really high returns to it. Um, I mean, Andrew's not an econometrician, an econometrician. Pedro is, but Andrew is a mere mortal, and he was able to make these real discoveries. It's really, I'm I'm impressed. 
I mean, you know, Andrew's, I, I'm already in, I didn't come out right. I mean, I just, I couldn't have done it. So, variance-weighted average treatment on the treated, a variance-weighted parallel trends assumption, negative delta ATT, okay? So the only way two-way fixed effects is going to be a consistent estimate of this weighted average causal effect is if you have parallel trends and you have no dynamic treatment effects, okay? So the variance-weighted ATT, these are now population terms, not samples, but that's that SKU stuff, SKL, mu's, okay? You get ATTs associated with like every uh, particular K-squared treatment uh, timing group, right? So there's really four of them. There's an ATT for K, there's an ATT for L, there's an ATT K mid, there's an ATT L post, okay? Weights are going to sum to one. These weights are going to sum to one, right? Now, if all the ATTs are the same, then the weighting doesn't matter. But it is still at least, you know, a weighted average. It's just kind of like an odd weighting because it's not like, it's all about your panel length. I mean, Sarah could run the same model. Ideally, me and Sarah are going to go to our policymakers and we're going to say, you know, here is an ATT, you know, Joe Biden. And, uh, you know, this is, what's, this is what we think will happen. And uh, not, hey, Joe Biden, here is an ATT. And it's a really, it's an artifact of the fact that I drew a sample from 2000 to 2008. And Cunningham did it from 2002 to 2010. It's a little different. Well, Joe Biden's not going to be doing anything with panels, right? So it'd be like better if you could have some sort of thing that was invariant to the panel. Nevertheless, that's not what you get with two-way fixed effects. Panel, I mean, parallel trends. Here's another thing. Parallel trends. Now, technically, uh, it is one term, the variance weighted parallel trends. But let's, let's look inside. Let's see how the sausage is made. You have K-squared parallel trends terms, right? You got this one. You got this one. You got this one. You got another one here, too. You got the L one. And they don't all have to be zero because all you need is the weighted average to be zero. But it's like for the weighted average to be zero and not all of them to be zero is like pure luck. Okay? It's pure luck. It's like a knife edge kind of condition because it would be like the, you know, I mean, it would be just like so random that you would, that that would be the case. Oh yeah, thank you, Mariana. That that's exactly what I was what I was thinking. Um, and then heterogeneity bias, heterogeneity bias. So you get here with heterogeneity bias this uh, particular uh, post minus pre. And look at this. If this is positive, if this is positive, that's a positive term, and that's negative. So you can have here something like this. This could be a ten. This could be a variance weighted ATT of ten. This could be parallel trends holds, and this could be a ATT of five, and you would get 10 minus five. This would be a, a uh, number would equal five. But what if you had this? What if you had a five on the variance weighted ATT, parallel trends were zero, and you had these really steep dynamics equal to 10, right? Positive number, positive number, Two-way fixed effects would be 5 minus 10 to be negative 5. See, that's the thing about two-way fixed effects. It does not have a no sign flip property. And to me, my whole career, I've just always been really thinking, I'm, I'm in luck if I get the sign right. I mean, I mean, I can live with a little bit of bias, but to get the sign wrong is to make like the absolute wrong conclusion about the policy. The policy is helping people and you think it's hurting people. Okay. So let us look at a scary, uh, let us look at a scary example. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to create in Stata, um, I got a lot of R stuff, but I'm going to do this in Stata. 
first, um, I'm going to create a simulation. I know, I know. It's not my, it's my, it's not my laptop. It's my, uh, my mouse. On the, and after I do this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the batteries out. Um, I still have a little bit of time. Let's see, what do I have? It doesn't tell me anymore. Uh, I'll do it right after this. So, um, so look, I'm gonna create a panel of a thousand firms. 25 per state, 40 states, 30 years. Okay, so just run that. So we'll say here, display. What was it? 25 times 40 times 30? Is that what it was? 30,000. 30,000. Okay. So now I'm going to create differential timing. All right, and I'm going to have four groups. Okay, group one is going to get treated in 1986, group two in 1992, group three in 98, group four in 04. Okay, and then I'm going to create a treatment dummy equaling zero one depending on when you were treated. Then I'm going to just have this simple data generating process. We're going to just introduce a little noise. By the way, this is from Andrew Baker. I did not come up with this simulation. He has this simulation. It's called Baker.do because it's Andrew Baker in the header says it says it also so andrew has this uh you know this error term this is going to give us our parallel trends assumption right here uh and here we're going to have treatment effect one for group one on average their treatment effect is going to be a 10 for group two it's going to be eight six four so you kind of got like this natural uh situation occurring where the people with the largest returns to treatment are adopting first and then the ones you know then it decreases so then we're just going to replace that and we're going to get treatment effects. Now, these are not going to be observed. We don't know what those are. We do know this. That's going to be a dummy for treatment. We do know treatment dates. We know what group you're in, but I don't know your treatment effect, right? Because that's invisible. All right. So I'm going to look at two situations. Two situations. Constant treatment effects heterogeneous treatment effects over time. Okay, so let's look at the constant treatment effects. Y2. Y2 is going to be a firm fixed effect. I had this firm fixed effect up here. Here. It's just a number between 0 and 5. So it's real simple. It's not really doing a lot, but I got this firm fixed effect. I got a linear trend. And then I've got a treatment effect times a dummy. Right? And the treatment effects are always positive. Okay, Then I've got this heterogeneous treatment effect. Firm fixed effect, linear trend, dummy of treated times the treatment effect kind of baseline value times the number of years since treated. So if it's 1986 and you were treated in 1986, it's going to be 1986 minus 1986 plus 1. That's Zero plus one, that's a one. So in that sense, the treatment effect in 1986 was a 10. The treatment effect in 1987 was 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and so forth. Okay? All right. So notice this for a second. All right? So 10 plus 8 plus 6 plus 4 divided by 4. Oops. All right, so the variance weighted treatment effect is going to end up being around four when I run uh, this regression right here. So I'm going to run this fixed effects regression on my constant treatment effects. Sort of do it this way and kind of be surprised. All right, so I'm going to run it. Strict exogeneity is holding, okay, by the construction of the data. So I better get a coefficient of seven on my treatment variable, and I do. Okay, I do. Now, I know that my treatment effects are positive. Look, 10 in 1986, 20, 1987, and so forth. Everybody's got increasingly positive treatment effects. Okay? 
So surely two-way fixed effects just weighted average over all individual group, you know, ATTs. Let's see. All right? So I don't know what it is, but it seems like it should be positive. It is not positive. Negative 6.69. Okay? Negative 6.69. Now there is a method you can use. There is a method you can use called the Bacon Decomposition. And here's what's crazy too. Even when I run event studies, and I know there is no treatment effect, and I know there is no treatment effect in the uh, pre-treatment period, I still will not get parallel trends either. We're going to see why that is in the Son and Abraham paper, but uh, two-way fixed effects can't handle anything right. Okay? All right. So... All right, so I'm going to do the bacon decomposition. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? The bacon decomposition, remember, what it is, is it's going to look at your individual coefficient, and it's going to say that it is equal to the sum of um, weights times individual two by twos, okay? All right, so there's not K squared in this example because there is no untreated group. So instead, it's going to be like K squared minus the four, I think. So it should be like K squared would be four groups, be 16. I think there's going to be 12. Yeah, so here we go. All right, so look what we get. 0.5 times 51.8. So uh, right now, all we have are two times, since we have no untreated group, all we have is earlier treated groups compared to uh, later groups. And we have a weight of 0.5 with an average diff and diff estimate of 51.8. And for the later groups, compared, so this was treatment compared to not yet treated. And this is treatment compared to already treated. And this one, we said it's the forbidden regression. Forbidden 2 by 2 is a 0.5 times negative 65. Now look at this. So we know it's 6.69. Look at what we get. Negative 6.69. Negative 6.69. Right? The two-way fixed effects coefficient is just the weighted sum of every single group specific two by two, okay? Now what we're gonna do next, I know that Pedro, Pedro has recorded a, uh, a discussion of uh, Clement, uh, Chase Martin, and I, um, De Hauteville. Uh, he, he did a recording. We're gonna, we're gonna look at the recording, okay? We're gonna look at the recording. We're gonna do it when we get back. But what I wanna do next is Callaway and Santana. Okay. The reason I want to do Callaway and Santana is because I want to go directly into the simulation. And uh, when I go directly into the simulation, since we just did the bacon decomposition and showed how bad it was, um, we're going to now look at Callaway Santana and see if it can improve. Okay. See if it can improve. Now, what we're doing now is we're going to be in a world of these weighted uh, manual, manual aggregations. That's probably the right way to think about it. The manual aggregated diff and diff models. Okay. So let's take a break. Let's come back five minutes till.